In the last video, we implemented code for the target network. In this video, let me spend some time explaining the loss and the optimization. Let me hop over to my whiteboard. So what we're doing is we're sending in our current queue and our target queue into the mean square error function and this calculates our loss. The mean square error function is basically current Q minus the target square it divide by two. That's basically the function. So if I were to calculate the loss, uh, I'm not really going to do the math. Let's say current Q is at two and we want to get it to four. I'll just say the answer is two. Um, I don't know if this is correct or not. Let's go with two. The loss gives us a measure of how far our current is away from our target. So the goal is to minimize loss to zero or near zero. At that point, the current and target should be matching or near matching. Now, how do we use loss to optimize the network? To optimize the network means to adjust the weights and biases of the network. If you look at the network, each line represents a weight. So there could be hundreds of weights to adjust. In this example, let's just look at one weight. Now I'm gonna graph my current weight against the loss. Since the mean square error is a quadratic formula, the graph is going to look like a parabola. I'm gonna try to draw a parabola. We know that the lowest point of a parabola is the vertex. So in order to minimize loss, we want to move towards the vertex. Now let's say with uh, the current loss of two, we're at some arbitrary weight here, and we have a loss of two. The loss.backward function computes gradients. Essentially, we're calculating the slope of this point. The slope gives us a indication of which way the vertex is. So now we know that we should adjust weight positively towards the vertex. If the point is on the right side of the vertex, obviously the gradient is going to point towards the left. So knowing the gradients, we use the optimizer to update the weights and biases. Remember that we passed in the learning weight into the optimizer. The learning weight scales how much we want to adjust. The learning weight adjusts how much we want to adjust the weight. If the learning weight is big, we might be able to get to the vertex quicker. But if it's too big, we might jump over the vertex and we're just bouncing back and forth and never really able to reach it. On the other hand, if the learning weight is small, we're making tiny, tiny updates to the weight. That means the training time is going to go up. Another problem is, now this is the parabola as we know right now. We might be, we might actually be part of a bigger parabola. So maybe it looks something like this, where the best weight is actually way out here. But because we're making these tiny, tiny updates, we're going to be stuck in this valley and are not able to jump out of it and look for the global minimum. And we're stuck in this uh, local minimum. Okay, so that's a really, really high level explanation of what's happening in these couple of lines. In the next video, we're going to jump back up here. This code right now is processing one experience at a time in a loop, which is not very efficient. PyTorch can actually do the whole batch at once. So in the next video, we're going to take a look at how to make this code more optimized for PyTorch.